In this video, we're going to talk about electronegativity and electron affinity. We'll talk about what those two things are, and then we'll talk about how we can compare elements to each other based on these two things uh, in a periodic trend. So let's start by defining these two terms. Let's start with electronegativity. Electronegativity is the ability of an atom to attract electrons to itself. It's really the strength of an atom. And we know at the core of every atom is the nucleus. And we have this proton here in red. And any nucleus is going to want to pull in electrons because electrons have a negative charge. And so we kind of have this ability of all atoms to be pulling on electrons if they get a little bit too close. And certain atoms will have a better ability at attracting electrons than others. So that's electro, uh, electronegativity. Let's take a look at electron affinity. Electron affinity is the energy change that's going to occur when an electron is added to an atom. So when an elect uh, atom is actually able to pull in an electron, there's going to be a change in energy. Energy may be released or energy may be required to add that atom. So in chemistry, we can say that if energy is released, that's going to be a favored process. In other words, that is most likely going to happen. And so if energy is required, then it will not be favored. But let's look at an example of kind of each of these situations here. So here's an atom of fluorine and an atom of cesium. Let's start with fluorine. When fluorine gains an extra electron, it will release energy. This is a favored process. And it's going to release actually negative 327.8 kilojoules per mole. And when you see that negative sign there, this just means energy is being released. And so this is going to be a favored process. So the bigger the negative number here, the more favored is going to be. So the more negative the electron affinity. For cesium, on the other hand, when cesium gains this electron, energy is actually required to put that electron into an atom of cesium. Cesium doesn't even want that extra electron. So you actually have to work to give cesium the electron. And the electron affinity for cesium is about 45.5 kilojoules per mole, and it's positive. And when we see that positive number, that means elect uh, energy was needed to add that electron. So that's electron affinity. Okay, let's look at the trend for these two on the periodic table. Let's start with electronegativity. So on the periodic table, electronegativity tends to increase as you move from left to right across a period and it will increase as you move from the bottom to the top of a column. And so the lowest electronegativity is going to be right down here in the bottom corner, and the highest electronegativity is going to be fluorine. It's not going to be helium, and actually the noble gases are not included in this idea of electronegativity because they don't want any electrons at all because they have a complete valence shell. So we can kind of forget about them and we can just count on fluorine as having the highest electronegativity or the highest ability to attract electrons. Okay, so how about electron affinity? And I've written here increasing electron affinity and it might be better to say um, becoming more negative because the more negative the number, the greater really the energy that's going to be released. And we actually have the same trend here as we had for electronegativity. And so electron affinity becomes more negative as you go from left to right across the periodic table. And it becomes more negative as you move from the bottom to the top. And so the most negative electron affinity is going to be right up here in this corner of the periodic table. And that's electronegativity and electron affinity.